So I was in the third grade. Someone had come to our school to speak about careers. And they went through all of the usual suspects, to be a doctor, to be an engineer, to be a lawyer. And when they said accountants, and they said accountants manage the money, I was sold. Excellence for me is an all-encompassing term for really paying your dues and standing at that intersection of anticipation, but also preparation. I have confidence in who I am. If it can be done, then I can do it. And so that has always been my attitude, and I think that's come from being a CPA, because I understood at an early age that being a CPA is a competitive advantage for me, and it is a differentiator. I don't know that I thought that I was a trailblazer, or that I was doing something that was so amazing, because my dad was work hard, work hard, work hard. And so in everything that I do, I want to put all my whole self into it. And I think my dad really played that out because a couple of times before you get used to the whole churn of do better, do better, you're wondering what else can you do? And I think that self-reflection is what I use today to really focus on how I can be better. Standing before you as the new chairman of the AICPA Board of Directors is such an honor and privilege, especially now as we take bold steps to create a future for our profession as bright and as vibrant as its past. We have a lot of geopolitical instability. We have cyber threats and certainly a lot of technology initiatives and change management on the horizon. We have a number of financial issues that are looming on the horizon. It's a great deal of uncertainty, not only for our members, but for the public. Working together, we will be well positioned. We will continue to work on all of the initiatives we have to enhance audit quality, to promote, protect our collective brands, and ensure that our profession is one that is open and inviting to everyone. With the association, we now have a advocacy voice of 650,000 members. We are located in 35 offices. Our members are in 179 countries. And so we are well positioned across the world to be that beacon light and that voice in the face of a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous world. Technology will define the future of our profession and our willingness to embrace it will determine whether it's our greatest threat or our biggest opportunity. Already, audit professionals are using technology to more easily access and analyze vast amounts of information, allowing them to dive deeper and gain greater insight. As a CPA CGMA, I see firsthand how technology is transforming finance, moving management accountants from governance to guidance. People wonder today, Kimberly, how did you get to accounting from information systems? Well, I majored in information systems because I thought computers would be useful. I was still determined to be an accountant and be a CPA, but when I realized that my school didn't have it, I decided, okay, I'll come back to it. And so I still move forward, but it was a horizontal up step and not a vertical step. And I think for young people, I don't think they realize that sometimes you have to take side steps to get where you really want to be. Leadership is interesting in a president or a chairman of the board role, because what I find is that in our meetings, you're speaking the least. You are maybe facilitating the meeting, but you're giving more opportunity to listen and hear from the board members because it's important for 
everyone to feel that their point of view has been represented in the discussion. Our board of directors for the association includes people from all backgrounds around the world. And so having that active, robust conversation and discussion and the ability for our board members to offer feedback is really important. Diversity for me means bringing people that are different together for any number of reasons. Because when you look at each person's perspective, it will bring about a better outcome. I would tell employers that the message of diversity and inclusion permeates throughout the entire organization and the business case of why it's important. Because there needs to be a quantifiable business case that supports the initiative. It also needs to be initiatives that are for everyone, but may have different focus points on different ethnicities, cultures, genders. And I think everyone understands that. Family is so important because you cannot do it without your family because your life is moving so fast. And the one thing that is constant is your family. And so many people may be aware that my mom passed away in July of 2016, and it was a tough year. I think what I've learned is that people want to hear more about how you overcame your challenges. They want to know how many times did you fall and what happened when you got up. And so it's a lesson for our young people because a lot of us are grieving, a lot of us are going through tough times, but it's the focus on our members, it's the focus on helping the public, it's the focus on being a mother and a wife that has helped me get through a tough year. But the other thing my family really taught me is to be humble and to have an attitude of gratitude and to recognize that I didn't get here by myself and that I should be appreciative of the blessings that I have and pay it forward whenever I can. When I think about the future, I think about tapestry. I think about vivid, bright colors. And those colors represent the diversity of our profession. We will bring together rich ideas, whether you're in public practice, business and industry, government, academia, not-for-profit, consulting, public. Regardless of where you are, my vision is that you will find a seat for you at the table. Our top talent, the best and the brightest, will see our profession as the path going forward, and they will not want to be anywhere else.